Okay, this video is going to be on tying pompano rigs with the Gen 3. I want to start off by showing you what you're going to need before you can start tying these uh, pompano rigs. And, uh, you know, let's uh, start over here. Uh, you're going to need some floats. I always have floats in my rigs. Now, I make these myself, and, uh, you know, you can watch that video. It's uh, a pompano rig float video, and... Uh, you can make these out of flip-flops. Uh, this is actually the device I do it with here, but uh, you can watch that video and check that out so you won't have to pay anything for those. Uh, you're going to need some tape. Uh, tape those hooks together when you're done. Um, you're going to need some 8 millimeter beads uh, to put on there. I always use a red bead, and that's, uh, that's a good color for the pompano rigs. The other thing you're going to need is some hooks. Now, the, the hooks can be a little difficult to find, but, uh, you know, you'll, uh, you'll get them if you look hard enough. You may have to buy in large quantities. Uh, I know uh, you can get a 1,000 hooks at Miami Fishing Supply, but that might be a little bit too much unless you co-op it. But these are Eagle Claw, and they're called Circle C. And they're a 2 aught hook. And these are great. These are these are not a kale hook. They're a circle hook. And uh, these are my go-to hook. And um, when you have a fish interested in your bait, you don't have to worry about setting the hook because these will set it for you. So we've got the hooks. Uh, we're going to need some uh, toothpicks. And don't just buy any toothpicks. Try to find these diamond party picks. The reason that's important is, is these party picks are made from hardwood and a lot of your uh, regular toothpicks that are all white are going to be a softer wood and you need that and these are going to uh, be inserted into your bead and your bead is going to stop your your float from moving and it's important that your float doesn't move okay you're going to need some uh, barrel swivels okay now these particular barrel swivels are from Bass Pro and uh, you can see the the um, the model number there and the quantity and they're 90 pounders and you're also going to need some dual lock snaps the barrel swivel is going to go at the top of your rig and the uh the dual lock snap is for uh putting your uh your surf casting sinker on now one little trick i like to do is i like to take uh, a barrel uh swivel and add it to the uh, dual lock snap and the advantage of doing that is is when you get some rough seas you know your sinker is going to start turning on you and it can cause a lot of line twist now I know you do have a barrel swivel at the top of your line and some people might say this is overkill but I think it works well and uh, all you got to do is uh, you got to just take this snap apart and then You'll be able to slide on your barrel swivel and then put it back together again. But uh, that's the way I like to do it. And you don't have to. You can just you can just tie it uh, directly onto that dual lock snap. But, uh, you know, and that, uh, that's your gear. Now, there's, there's other things you're going to need. You don't have to use just uh, those 8 millimeter beads. Sometimes I like to mix it up a bit. And these are, uh, these are glow-in-the-darks. And I got these on eBay, a uh, pretty good price. But uh, anyways, uh, you can make any type of rig that you want. You know, these are these are other floats here. Now these these are uh, little corkies, and they're 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 quite expensive. After I got used to making my own for free, but uh, you know that's the beauty of making your own rigs. You can make them any way you want. So that'll cover the hardware portion of this. Uh, the only other thing that we can talk about here is what type of line you're going to use. Now, I always make my rigs uh, out of uh, mono. I'm a big fan of mono, and th this is 50-pound Suffix Tritanium Plus. And the reason I'm a big fan of mono is, is it, um, it ties a better knot than the, uh, the fluorocarbons. You know, there's... I, I've had enough uh, practice and experience to know that, yeah, the fluoro 
is a lot clearer, but I will tell you that if you're, you're hooked on fluoro, don't try to use 50 pound fluoro because you're just going to end up with really lousy knots. You're going to have to either use a 40 pound maximum or a 30 pound. Now this is the Berkeley Vanish and this is really affordable stuff. Um, but the truth of the matter is, is if the fish are on the bite, that uh, monofilament, even though it is a little more visible, trust me, if you've got good bait, you know, if you've got uh, live sand fleas uh, coupled with some uh, fish bites or fish gum in case they fall off, you're going to get fish. You know, when the fish are on the bite, you're going to get fish. So, but anyways, a little tip there. Don't try to go to a 50 pound on the fluoro. Go to a 40 or a 30 and you're going to end up with better knots. It just won't be quite as strong. That's another reason I like having the 50-pound uh, the test is the 50-pound test will uh, hold up in a big school of bluefish. So, uh, and like I say, the knots, the knots are superior. I've done weight tests with the, uh, the monofilament, and I can tell you from my experience that the monofilament will take way more than 50 pounds and the fluoro just it's super stretchy and it, it will not take anywhere near the capacities that they show on there they might say they're good to 40 pounds but i, I guarantee it that they're just not as strong so the uh, mono will stand up to uh, a big school of fish the other beauty of this is i can use this for my pompano rigs and i also use it for my shock leader and if you're not using a shock leader uh, you need one because you're casting out four, five, six ounce weights sometimes. And uh, if you ever wondered why your sinker gets hurled towards the ocean and doesn't come back, it's probably because you didn't have a shock leader on. So, so I can use this for both. And it'll stand up to a few nicks. Uh, you get into a school of bluefish and it will would stand a few nicks. And uh, I cannot say that for the fluoro. So... Anyways, this is, this is my go-to line. I also use the suffix Tritanium Plus um, in the 30-pound uh, test in the yellow uh, for my main line on my spinning reel. So that's enough about line. And uh, let's put away this gear and let's show you how to use the Gen 3 and tie up a pompano rig from start to finish. All right, the other thing I want to show you that's going to come in real handy when you're tying these rigs is a, a pair of pliers. And try to find a pair that's small, not some huge pair of uh, locking pliers. Uh, these are nice because they fit in my hand easily, and these are going to help you tie your knots, and they're going to make it a little safer, the operation. The other thing is a good pair of clippers. Get a big pair, something that's going to... Uh, allow you to get over the top of uh, swivels or not. So uh, anyways, just uh, make sure you got yourself a, a good pair of nail clippers. And I like to put it on a lanyard. And while I'm tying rigs, it's always on me. And sometimes if I'm in a, a position on the beach where I've got to retie a rig or whatever, it's nice to have the lanyard around your neck and you're not going to lose it in the sand. Let's uh, go ahead and let's start making our first rig. We uh, take our copper spinner off on our uh, snap swivel here, and we'll put it back when we're done. I've got my line up on a little piece of pipe here, and uh, makes it a little easier for uh, rolling it out. Now, I don't know what type of line you're using. If you've got a lot of loops and kinks in your line, you know, you could stretch it out a little bit. But uh, this suffix line, the Tritanium Plus, is pretty good stuff, and I don't have to worry about that too much. The other thing I want to talk about too is, is, you know, you have to know how much line to pull out before you connect it to your clip. And uh, what I like to do is try to strive for uh, 16 inch segments. And instead of guessing each time, um, I'll just mark it out on my workbench uh, or, you know, bring some type of a yardstick or whatever if you're working on a kitchen table and uh, just measure it off. And that way your rigs are going to be more consistent. The other reason that 16 inches is important too is when you get all done at the end of the day, you're, uh, you're going to take your sinker off, but you're going to connect your hooks together 
and then uh, you're going to take your uh, snap swivel for your uh, your sinker and you're going to connect it to one of the uh, eyelets on your rod and uh, once you tighten up uh, if that uh, segment isn't uh, 16 inches, if it's too short, your hooks won't have tension on each other. When you go to tighten up your line and put it on top of your, uh, your, uh, your car or however you're transporting it. So it's pretty important. Plus, keep in mind that, you, you know, your pompano like uh, swimming a little bit higher in the water column. So if you've got rigs that are a little longer, it's going to help you catch Mr. Pompano a little better. All right, here we go. Let's uh, let's measure off 16, and let's put it on that left clip. Let's wrap it around. Now, you could wrap it around this short one if you wanted short loops for some reason, but I always use the bigger loops. Come all the way around, connect it, and uh, on my previous video where it shows you how to make the Gen 3, I gave you a tip, and I'm going to remind you of it now. Make sure that your clips are twisted up and the top of the clip is even with the top of the board. Otherwise, if you don't do that and you have it down too low, it's going to have a tendency to pop out of the clips. So uh, the other tip I wanted to show you too is, is when you go to put in this spinner, uh, another advantage of having the dowels versus nails is if you look to the left or right, you're going to see an air gap here. And that's what you're going to shoot for when you're going to put that spinner in, it's going to make it a lot easier. So just go for one of those air gaps, and uh, we're dealing with 50-pound test. So we can only twist so many times before we'll get a lousy knot and a weak knot. So what I found is, is three full twists, six half twists, whatever you want to call it, but you got to make sure you don't go any more than three. And uh, if you're using 40-pound test or 30-pound test, you want lighter rigs, well, then you're going to get away with four, but do a little bit of experimentation. But, uh, you know, four is going to be plenty on a, on a 40 or a 30 pound. You really don't need to go any more than that. Too many coils are going to make for a weak knot. So let's go ahead. Uh, we've got our 50 pound test on there. Let's go with three turns. Half, one, half, two, half, three. All right. We take it off the, the dowel, we put it into our spinner, and before we grab, uh, before we let go of this uh, mono, you know, get your spinner out of there and put it on the deck so you don't lose it. Give this a slight tug to gather up your knot, okay? Once you've got that, you can release, and you got to wet it. Now, if you don't want to use spit, you can use a sponge, whatever, but I always use what mother nature gave me now we've got that wet that's important otherwise you're gonna end up with a weak knot if you don't wet it and put that big loop over this dowel here and then just cinch it up okay and you got yourself a a, a beautiful knot there now we're gonna measure off another 16 same thing now this is a a two hook rig but there's nothing to stop you from making a three hook rig. The only reason I use two hook is uh, it's a little less uh, wind resistance when I'm casting and a little less bait to use. If I'm getting low on bait, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna cost me more bait to go with three. So anyways, we, we measured out our 16, we connect it, grab our spinner, go for that gap. One, two, three. You know, that wide spinner makes it a lot easier. Okay, let's uh, pop these off. Give it a little tug. Gather up your knot just a little bit. Release. Wet it. Put it on the dowel. Gather it up. Don't snap too hard, you know, especially if you're working with 30-pound test or 40-pound test. Uh, also, the fluorocarbon, that stuff is uh, if you don't lubricate it well, you, know, you may find yourself breaking the line. But anyways, uh, so now we measure off 16 again, and we cut our line. All right, so there we go. Now we've got 
what we have uh, to have for one pompano rig. And, you know, when we, uh, when we go to put our hooks on, there's a couple different ways to do that. Now, uh, my nephew, he, uh, he likes to leave the loops alone and he doesn't put his hooks on and then he'll put them on at the beach. He'll just put the whole rig after it's made with the uh, barrel swivel and uh, snap swivel. He'll put that in a baggie and put the hooks on at the beach. Now, I don't like doing that for a couple reasons. Well, first of all, I'm using 50 pound and uh, some people use a lighter, lighter pound test, but with 50 pound, you know, you've got to really pinch that to get it through the eye of the hook. And uh, the other reason I like to cut the line is it's going to allow my bait to float higher in the water column, like we talked about earlier uh, with Mr. Pompano liking that bait higher in the water column. So that's just the way I do it. You, you're going to adapt your own style and skills and, and, and make that rig just the way you want it. And that's what really counts. So, All right, let's stop the Pompano rig build here just for a second. I wanted to take the time to show you a really good close-up of what I'm doing with this Gen 3 jig. I, I know I zoomed in for you a little bit, but you know I think it's important that you guys get to see what uh, what's going on here. And uh, so by giving you this close up, you can see exactly what I'm doing with the spinner, how I'm wrapping it around, and um, how I'm pulling it off the pegs and tightening a little bit and. I thought that was an important part of the process. So, um, you know, just uh, sit back, relax, watch this. I'm going to tie two loops, and uh, then we'll continue on with the uh, the building of the Pompano rig. But I just felt that it was important for you guys to see this close up and, and well-focused, and then we'll continue on with the process. Uh, the other segments don't really require me to... To zoom in too much so uh, just uh, enjoy this zoom in session here and then we'll continue with the rest of building this Pompano rig. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's take one end here it doesn't matter which end. What I like to do uh, if I want to be really fussy is I'll hold the rig out and uh, I'll try to have the, the dropper loop facing down a little bit. And then I'll say, okay, that's the way I want it. And then I'll use the top for, uh, for my barrel swivel. So let's go ahead and grab a barrel swivel. Now, when you go to put your, your barrel swivel on, that's just a clinch knot. I've got a video on the clinch knot. And the clinch knot is super easy, super effective. And... All you're going to do is you're going to twist your line. Now, this is 50-pound test, so you don't want to give yourself too much of a tag because it's going to take away from uh, your rig, but you don't want too little or it's going to come out of your hand. But uh, anyways, if you take that and wrap it around three times, two, three, okay. And now all we have to do is put it in the loop. And grab the tag in, give it a little tug so it doesn't fall apart, you know, and that's that's about how tight you want it before you uh, start lubricating it. Always lubricate all knots, and uh, this is where the pliers come in handy. What I like to do for a good a good knot, and it won't wear out your hands as much. Speaking of hands, you know, sometimes I'll find myself making 20, 30 rigs, and when you go to cinch, it's going to put the most pressure on the crease of your uh, your your little fingers. So I've actually taken small pieces of duct tape and put it in there if I'm making a bunch of rigs and I won't end up with a line cut. But uh, anyways, what that, take your pliers, grab your barrel swivel, and then give it a nice tug. And that makes for a really nice tight knot. And we're going to have to cut off the tag end. Normally I have a trash can right down below me, but today we'll just let it drop on the deck. All right, so there we go. You know, that's going to be the barrel swivel that's going to attach to your shock leader. And your shock leader is attached to your normal line with a blood knot. I got a video on that too, so check that out. But uh, 
Now we're going to go to the other end of town here and we're going to grab one of our snaps for our sinker. Now I, I told you earlier, I like to use uh, the barrel swivels on the snaps just to prevent line twist and stormy seas. Uh, you know, and when you go to buy these barrel swivels and these snaps, you know, get those in black. I know the hooks are in silver, but they, ha they handle the ocean water better. The black hooks don't have that nice sea guard coating. And uh, the hook, for the most part, is covered up by your bait. So don't worry about that too much. But you don't want too much flash. If you, if you buy silver components, you may end up uh, attracting uh, Mr. Bluefish and you know, that, that's okay if you, you like to catch bluefish, but uh, I don't like to attract them if, I, if I've if i got a uh, pompano around especially. So, same thing. We're going to put on that snap for our sinker. And, you know, there's another way of doing this, uh, this knot versus doing it by hand. Now, I like to use a device. Where is it? There we go. This is a, it's a clinch knot tool. And this thing is so nice, you know. I mean, the older I get, the more manual dexterity I lose. But uh, this makes it really easy when you're tying lots of rigs. And th this is primarily what I use. I just wanted to show you, you know, how to tie that clinch knot. And you can look at that close up on the video I made. But... Uh, Anyways, with this tool, all you have to do is drop on your barrel swivel or your snap swivel or your hook, and you can take this tool and put it through the loop and go one, two, three, and then you open it up and you connect it to your line. Probably should have had my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. All right, once you connect your line then you drag it through, and tighten up your line a little bit before you wet it. Wet it, grab your snap, and make sure when you grab your snap, you wanna grab the opposite end that closes and locks. You wanna grab that straight piece, otherwise you're gonna damage your snap. Grab that, give it a tug, and cut off your tag end. But that's, that's a neat little tool that, that will help you a lot. They're not expensive. It's built like a tank. It's solid brass, spring-loaded where it grabs the line. And it is, it is good. I'm going to continue to use that while I'm tying just to speed things up a little bit, even though that first knot didn't come out so speedy. All right, so now we've got uh, both of our barrel and our snaps on. Okay, so now... We have to cut our loops. What I do is, is I hold the rig upright and uh, what I like to do is try to uh, visualize which line is on top and which is on bottom. It really doesn't matter, but I'm just being fussy. And then I'll, I'll cut the one that's on bottom. And uh, this is another tip too. When you go to cut that tag off, leave at least three quarters of an inch. And I'll tell you why. If you uh, if you cut that tag really short, now I know you gotta cut the tag short on the sinker, and you can see how long I left it. But anyways, if you cut that really short and you got a lot of grass in the water, by having this longer tag, it won't pick up as much grass. The grass will go over it and it'll bend it and it'll come right off where if you've got a really, you know, short tag that's only an eighth of an inch, that tends to grab the grass a little more. So that's the way I like to do that. Let's go ahead and cut the other one. About three quarters of an inch. All right, so now what we got to worry about now is we got to worry about floats and beads and, uh, and hooks on here. So the order you're going to put this on is it's going to be a bead first, then your float, 
and then your hook. So let's go ahead and grab one of our eight millimeter beads. Like I said, I should have worn my glasses. I might have trouble seeing this. All right, we drop our bead on, go over here. Oh, okay, I'm getting a little low on rigs with pink floats, so I think I'll take one of them off. And we'll go ahead and put that in. And now we gotta grab our uh, L197 2 watt Eagle Claw hook and drop that on. All right, so now Grab a loop, uh, make the loop about that big. And uh, whether you're tying it by hand or you're using this. But same thing, it's clinch knot. We got 50 pound test, you're just gonna do three turns. And we just stick it in, one, two, three. And we grab our tag in. We try to grab our tag in, pull it through. Pull it through enough where it's gonna cinch that line a little bit. All right. About that far. Wet it. Grab our hook right on the straight portion, right below the eye. Give it a tug. You know, and that's where it really makes it safe with the pliers is you're not only going to get a good knot, but you're not going to accidentally pull on the hook and drive the thing into your finger. So, and if you ever do put a hook in your finger, the easiest way is to keep pushing it, get it all the way through, cut the barb off, and then take it out. Hopefully you won't have to experience that. And we're gonna have to have a short tag. Now on, on these tags, I like to leave about an eighth of an inch. No less, no more. That way if I get uh, a big, big fish on there and it tightens up the knot even more, which it shouldn't with the pliers, uh, we won't lose the fish. All right, so we got our hook tied on. Now what we have to do, um, and this is really important, you know, some rigs that you buy, the, uh, the float is just hanging loose. And uh, if, you, uh, if you don't secure this, what's gonna happen is, is it could be in the water and then the bait could pull it down and the buoyancy of the float could bring it up. And now, you know, that fish might see the float and start tapping at it and the bait's way down here. You know, fish have a tendency to test things first. Well, you want that you know, you want that right near the hook. That's why uh, if you uh, Google uh, Pompano float hook, you know, that is, it's a popular rig for years because, you know, the, uh, the float is real, right close to the hook and uh, you got a, a better hookup rate. So, so how are we gonna secure that? Well, we're gonna secure that with our toothpicks we talked about, our diamond party picks. And um, what you're going to want to do is take your clippers and take about, oh, I don't know, a little more than an eighth of an inch off. You still want to be able to insert it into that uh, eight millimeter bead easy enough. Cut off both ends. One toothpick's going to be enough for two floats. And what that's going to do is if we didn't cut off a little bit, the toothpick would go in and then it would start coming out the other end quite a bit. So we take that toothpick and we're just going to insert it into that eight millimeter bead. All right, and just get it started. Make sure it's uh, make sure you've got that bead all the way up against the float, uh, float, and the float all the way against the hook before you insert. All right, so now there we are, and now we're going to take our pliers again. And uh, I feel it's easier if I put it close to my chest. I put my pliers about a half an inch away from the bead, and I give it a good push. And you'll feel it stop. It's not going to go anymore. And uh, and then I'll cut that toothpick. And I won't try to cut it flush. I'll leave a little bit uh, hanging out. And that does a few things. I kind of like the the look it gives. It almost makes it look like a little nymph or something. And you can see I could have had that a little closer. I can pull that line a little bit and tighten it up. But uh, how that's going to help you is... You know, when you're all done fishing at the end of the day or at the end of the week, you know, especially if you got a school of bluefish or a, a shark got a hold of you, you're going to have to do a couple things to maintain all of your equipment. You're going to have to run your fingers down your shock leader to make sure there isn't a big nick there. If there's no nicks, you can leave it. 
but there's usually one or two. And uh, I know some fishermen change their shock leader every time they go out. The other thing you're going to want to do is, is you're going to want to uh, reclaim some of the hardware on these rigs, uh, but certain things you don't want to reclaim. Now, I'll always reclaim the barrel swivel and the snap swivel, okay? Until they get to the point where they're so shiny, I, I think they're going to attract bluefish. But uh, the other thing you want to reclaim is your beads. So you can pull that toothpick out and easily reclaim that bead. The floats, I'm not worried about reclaiming, uh, reclaiming those because truth is I've, I've got a bunch of them. They're, they're, they're super cheap. And uh, the hooks, I never try to reclaim because they're going to be some corrosion. They're going to be a little duller uh, after they get drugged through the sand a bunch of times. So uh, I never try to reclaim my hooks either. And uh, just a little word on that to save you a little bit of money. So... All right, let's uh, let's find my toothpick that I dropped because I'm gonna need that for that second hook. All right, bead first, and we're doing pink. We're gonna grab another float. That hole stays open nice on that wire. Grab our circle hook. And uh, speaking of circle hooks, when you're buying hooks, make sure they have that shape. You know, you don't want to buy a kale hook. Um, kale hook, uh, some some old timers say that uh, kale hooks can swallow uh, in a way where if you want to try to release the fish, they'll uh, it'll hurt them bad. So I don't know if it's true or not, but I I like. Uh, preserving nature when I can. And if I got a short on a pump and I want to get a release and I want to make sure it gets big enough for me to catch in six months. So anyways, go ahead and put your hook on. Let's uh, tie this one the old fashioned way. And we're just going to do three turns. Two. Three. And you know, sometimes your line you want to straighten it out before you put your tag in through. The other thing is, is grabbing this tag in a lot easier when you do it by hand with your teeth. Give it a tug. Make sure you hook your lip when you're doing that. Wet it. And grab your hook. Give it a tug. Cut off the tag. Let's move our, our bead down and give it a push, cut it off, and that is it. You have got yourself a pompano rig, and you can see the length on it. It's, it's pretty good. Let's... Uh, Let's see if we can measure it up. Uh, there is 24 there. And there's another 24. So that's 48 plus, oh, I don't know, 4 inches. So 52 inches. And uh, like I say, that's good. That'll get it up on the water table. And now all you got to do is... Uh, what I like to do is I like to buy these these baggies with the uh, with the zip on it, and uh, I can use it for my rigs. I can use it for my lunch and uh, reuse them. And before I go to stuff those in the bag, though, I like to put my hooks together, and this little trick will prevent you from having the hooks put holes in your bags and when you're when you're fighting pompano fast and furious and you get cut off by a shark or whatever you want to want to be able to grab another rig as quick as you can put it on and uh continue continue catching so what i like to do is pull out about an inch and a half of tape put the hooks together put my tape on and uh, 
when you get on the beach, it's a lot easier to grab the hook, separate them and pull them apart and then just pull the rest off of the other hook. And uh, now it's a little easier to stuff in your bag, loop that up with your hand, put it in your bag, and close it almost all the way and push all the air out of it. Because what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have at least, a, you know, at least six or eight rigs on the beach. I mean, I remember one day I got caught off 12 times by the sharks. But sometimes the sharks are there because the pomp are there. So you got to play with those sharks as much as they tick you off when they cut you off. So anyways, um, go ahead and roll it up and roll them all together. Put them in a rubber, uh, put a rubber band around them and throw them in your bucket and you're ready to go. Um, trying to think what else we, uh, we want to talk about here of, you know, like I say, you can, you can use any color bead that you want. You know, I've got some of these glow in the darks and, uh, I, I know that a lot of people like using, uh, color beads that might match the shells in the area you're fishing because, you know, that's what the, the fish are used to eating. So. Anyways, uh, that's going to do it for this video. That's how you make your rigs with your Gen 3. And I hope it helped you. I hope you learned a little bit. And that's going to do it for this video.